Hey gang, welcome back to our bathroom remodel series. We have gotten a lot done since our last episode where we tiled and grouted a shower. So, where we battled. Yep, yep, and it looks great now that it's dried and everything. We're gonna get some color matched caulk and go around the perimeter and a couple spots in the niche, but it looks great. Uh, in the meantime, I gave the vanity one coat of the blue just so that um, they could see the color and make sure it was what they wanted. It looks great. The countertops were put in. Uh, a couple things about the countertop. The modern design called for just a three quarter inch thickness here, not the typical inch and a half that you would have. So my countertop guys were able to cut that off and polish this and give it that modern appearance. For the sinks, they drilled a two inch hole here for the vessel sink and a one and three eighths inch hole here for the faucet. So a vessel sink, we actually have one over here. You want to give them a sneak peek? Just a quick little, Yep. here we go. Preview. All right. <laughs> so it sits on top and uh, the drain will obviously go through here. In our previous videos, you saw that we cut a subtop. Well, since we don't have this edge to hide the subtop, I had to put some bracing in here to give this quartz some nice support. So unfortunately, we can't show you that right now because we have this taped off. Remember, it's nice and white inside and then blue on the outside. So once we get this off and we hook up the drains, we'll show you that bracing so you can see what we did. As you can see, we've also started to lay tile on the floor. We're actually almost done. So these, these two rows here, I actually did yesterday. It's a full tile from here. It's a full tile. Obviously that's a full tile. So I did these two yesterday, and now I can walk on these two and cut and fit all these. It's just too, it's too small of an area for me to get in here and cut and fit and work my way out with the bucket of thin set and bucket of water and all that. I like doing it this way better. So we just have a few more to set, why don't we, and we're, we're out of thin set, so why don't we go outside and mix up some more thin set. Let's do it. All right. That's our last one, man. Yep. That looks great. Only big tile from now on. Right. 12 by 24 goes fast. All right, we're gonna let that set up and we're gonna come back tomorrow and grout it. So we'll see you then. We'll see you then. <laughs> Hey gang, it's the next day for us here at this bathroom remodel. Right now we're ready to mix up our grout. We're gonna give Prism a second try, huh? Yep. Uh, this is the platinum color. We're gonna only mix one bag this time, the last time we mixed two, so we're just gonna stay with one bag and we I think we are only gonna need one bag, yep. actually. So, I mean, we got no time to waste. We got our drill set up with our paddle mixer and our water measured out. So let's go ahead and get mixed.
All right, gang, we've got the grout on the floor done. It looks great. We're just waiting for it to set up. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. <laughs> this went off in five minutes. This has taken 45 minutes. Right. Same product, mixed according to instructions, but totally different outcome. So a little frustrating. We might have gotten a little paranoid. And uh, I mean, we didn't overwater it because we did water it to the instructions. Mm -hmm. We followed all the instructions. But we also followed all the instructions for this grout as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of sketchy, kind of weird. Yeah. No consistency really. Yeah. All right. So it's kind of weird. You want to go play uh, Oh Hell on your phone some more? A little bit. <laughs> Just to go do something. <laughs> hey gang, we finished the grout. It looks great. We're going to give you a sneak peek, but we'll show you the full effect later on. But today we're jumping right back into it and we're going to start putting up lights. You can see here, I've got paint samples on the wall. I did one here, one in the corner, one down here, and one there. So we want to put all the lights in with the proper bulb that we're going to use so that this color is showing up properly. We've done it before where we've did the lights later and the paint looks a different color. So we're going to put up lights today. So this is the vanity light. It's cool, huh? Yeah. It's got a clear glass shade. And this is the mounting bracket for the back. It goes like that. So I always check these. So this bracket goes on the wall in that direction. And we're gonna use a pancake box in the wall. This is a pancake box. It's a half inch thick, and this one's four inches in diameter. So we're gonna mount them with the mounting screws in the horizontal position. And they'll go right through there. If we were to mount it with the screws vertically, we'd be in a mess because we don't have a hole or a slot there. Yes, we could drill one, but let's, let's do it. Let's make it easy on ourselves and do it like that. The designer, my wife, has already been here. And we've determined that this line is the bottom of this fixture. So based on that, we're gonna mark the center of this one, of this one, and we're gonna come in here in the shower and we're gonna put in a, one of our favorite four inch LED lights. All four holes happen to be the same diameter, four and eight. So we're gonna mark all those and drill them. That's all three hole locations marked. Let's get our drill and get them done. Grab it. No, I might need you. I got it. There's the wire that we put in during rough. All right, on, on this one, our connector is hitting the stud so the box won't sit tight. So we're just gonna remove that little part with our buzz saw and then we'll be fine. That's all it took. So now let's fish the wire out of there. Just took a piece of ground wire from my 12-2, I can see it. So let's mount these and get them ready to put up our lights. And so there's our box. Now we talked about earlier, I was gonna put these horizontal but I had to put them at a 45 to accommodate the knockout where we made our notch. So let me go get a ground screw and we're gonna mount this light. All right, so we're ready to attach the fixture to the pancake box. So that's how it, how it works. I've got the ground from the fixture on this ground screw and then the ground from our switch leg is bonded to the box. So let me tuck all this in here and we'll mount this and then we'll do the other one. There we go. We don't need much wattage here. No nope. four of them. Cool, dude. All right, let's do this one in the tub area. And then all we have to do is put in some switches. I'm gonna put in some temporary switches. And that'll be it for lighting. Dang, dude. You got enough? You got enough wire? So you notice this is 12 gauge wire on this light because it's tied into a 20 amp circuit and the other two were what? 14. Yep, because we're on 15 now. So it makes it even more fun putting 12 gauge in here. 
take a 12 gauge to it. Yeah. If I had another 12 gauge coming in here, that would be a pain, wouldn't it? Yeah, almost impossible. To make a junction in there? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Woo! Cool. Sweet. All right. We can work on switches or put in the trim. Either one's progress. All right, gang, the lights are done. You can see we've got this one on. So now we're gonna put on the shower hardware. We're gonna start at the top with the shower, the shower head. We've got the shower arm all ready to go. We've got Blue Monster tape on the threads. And then you'll notice, look at that. Shower arms have a, a longer side and a shorter side. See that? The longer side always goes in the wall. I've seen them done like that sometimes. <laughs> This is how I like to tighten them. Just put the vinyl coated handle in there and turn it. That way you don't mar this up with the jaws. Perfect. All right, so we got that done. And we're going to flush it out through here before we attach the head permanently. So now let's take this off. I already loosened it. And back in the rough end stage, I told you about a part in here I've never seen. And I'm going to show you what it's about. So this little guy, it's called a cross flow preventer. I can get it out. So now we're gonna throw it away. We don't need it anymore. So I used to work in a facility that had like 150 units and I had a recirculating pump on the hot water and it didn't have these at the time. So when we were remodeling apartments, we would rough this in, turn the water back on and then the next day there would be a whole wing of a building with no hot water because the cold water through this valve body, push the hot water all the way back to the boiler room. So after we discovered that, we started to get the valves that had an integral stop here. An integral stop is just a valve right here where my fingers are. So if we had those, we could, we could turn it off here and work on this while the rest of the house had water. But this is to prevent that cross flow back and forth. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's get the cartridge and put this thing together. All right, gang, we got all this together. We didn't video it. Sometimes you just have to put aside all the distractions, get out your glasses. I got to get out my glasses with the instructions and figure this out. Um, and the other thing you may have noticed during the rough end, we had a, a galvanized steel nipple and I've since changed it to see the brass one. Right. That way, when you turn this on, you don't get a bunch of rusty water. In fact, first time I turned it on, it was black water coming out of there because the inside of that nipple was just steel pipe. So that's done. Uh, this set screw, you only use it for copper pipe. Uh, this will adapt to a piece of copper or threaded pipe. So that's done. And then the other challenge we had was the overflow cover. The one that came with this had two holes in it. And believe it or not, they did not line up with the two holes in the overflow fitting behind the tub. Go back and watch our video where we put this tub in and you'll see that fitting. So I had to go buy this one. Um, I'm not going to tell you how much it was. More than $50 though, right? And it has one screw in the middle which fits in that little aluminum plate. So this is all done. I'll put this back on real quick and then I'll show you today's project. Uh, I got all electric done. And uh, what's this little patriotic cover plate you got here? You like that? Yeah, it's nice, nice little touch. Yeah, so if you came into a bathroom and you saw, saw that and you turn the lights on, what would you think that these were? Well, I would look up there and I would see all that machinery through those slots and I would mm -hmm. say, okay, so there's, there's an exhaust and potentially a heater in here. So I would think that the red is for heat and that the blue is for exhaust maybe right now these screws are uh, ten dollars each from the home center no that's not true so my dad used to do this uh, he would paint the screws to help you know which was which i mean how many times you go in a bathroom you're like okay where's the where's the heater is that the heater no that's the fan or whatever so it makes it easy that's awesome a little detail yeah so what are we doing today we got quite a operation down here so yesterday i set the toilet and the bolts would never tighten down. The toilet was always loose. So I'm gonna come down here. So I took the toilet off. This bolt came off with this piece of plastic. So this was cracked. 
and that happens a lot. So they make what's called a spanner flange, and then you, you get it under this flange, and then your bolt goes right there. And that's how you fix that problem. Remember, this goes, this has to go underneath. But then when I was messing with it, I realized the whole thing is cracked on this side. See that? Big old crack. Yep. So then it was like, okay, now we gotta change this. They make they make a plate that goes over this that you bolt down, but I mean this thing's this thing's broken. It needs to be fixed. The other thing you notice is these countersunk holes, they're for screws. Now we're on a slab here. They do not screw it down, but I think they should be screwed down. And you can make a case that if there were screws where my thumbs are, would this have cracked? And I'm gonna say probably not. So I have a new flange. This one, it's got a stainless steel ring. So what we're gonna to try to do is remove this old one and simply glue that one inside the four inch PVC pipe. Now, is the diameter of the new one smaller? Nope, it's the same. So this is made to go inside four inch pipe or on the outside of three inch pipe. Mm. At the home centers on, in the bottom left hand corner of the box, there's a little picture and it tells you that information. Is it made to go on the outside of four inch or on the inside of four inch? Um, four inch and three inch are such that one fitting can go over three or inside four. I've got this internal pipe cutter. It's made just for this purpose. All right, gang, we've got the top of the old flange removed. So this part right here is this part from the old flange. And then you can see right here, that's the four inch pipe that this is glued inside of. And this fitting is made to go inside a four inch pipe. So we need to remove this. So we're gonna try this trick. We're gonna, we're gonna kerf this pipe. We're not gonna cut into this. We're gonna just kerf this and see if we can knock this out in little segments. If we can't, we have plan B. I've had success with kerfing this and knocking out segments on uh, ABS pipe. And it works well on PVC pipe that has just recently been glued. And then you realize you made a mistake and you can get it out. But this has been here for 40 years. But I, I do see kind of a line right here. So let's give it a shot. All right. Let's see what we can do here. And so we have our two cuts made. We're just gonna try it. We're gonna try to knock out this segment. We've cut through this part until our blade just hit the original four inch PVC pipe. Oh, look at that. Hey, and that's nice too. Yep, it's a good finish. Yeah. You wanna keep going? <clears throat> I mean, plan B would sound pretty nice. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. All right. I'll go for a little bigger segment this time. Watch this, look at that. Can you see that? Yeah, the whole thing is yep. coming loose. Look at that. Oh. That was, Almost I would never have expected that. <laughs> Dang, what kind of glue are they using? I don't know. Are they using glue? They should have. Now, I've worked on a house where it was never glued, but I can feel that's rough. Right. Uh, I don't see any purple primer. I don't know if they even had purple primer back in the early 80s. Mm. Let's see if we can get this out. You love when it's easy like that, oh, man. Oh, my oh. gosh. I didn't even sleep last night. I was so worried about this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Good thing I had these on. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Whew. All right, we got it out. Look at that. Ooh. Now I, I'm just flabbergasted. I can't believe that popped out of there that easy. And so now this one will fit right in there. Nice and easy. Yep. So got a few little places. So let's go. Let's get the inside of this cleaned up with some sandpaper. Okay. Oh, another reason why you put the rag in there. <laughs> and. Uh, We'll get this thing in. All right, nice. All right, gang, this, this is an extended hub. In other words, it's a lot deeper than it needs to be. 
and it's actually fighting us as we try to dry fit this. So we're just going to cut some of this off. All right, we're just going to cut it with our buzz saw. It'll be fine. That's plenty of glue surface. Let's do it. Clean that up with a file. Okay. Is that hot? Nope. All right, gang, we're in here with our trimmed flange. It's a little harder to get started now. I think the, the piece we cut off had a slight taper on it, but it goes in there. So I'm going to clean this with primer and we're going to send it. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to attach this flange to the concrete slab. Time to bust out the hammer. Let's get it. So there's a reason I got this type of flange with the stainless steel ring that spins. If we'd have gotten a one piece flange, can you imagine how much difficulty we would have had lining this up perfectly? Now to get these bolts in there, you have some room here, but I didn't have to worry about it. And now I can drill through here and we're going to attach this to the slab. I think we'll do one Jordan and then we'll, so it won't move and then we'll do the other three. Okay. This is the type of anchor we're using. It's all I really use for masonry. So it takes a quarter inch diameter hole. So we're just driving it through the hole in the flange. And then we'll start the screw. And now we'll tap the screw and drive that anchor all the way into the concrete. Dang like that. Now we can tighten this. Look at you. Beautiful. Now we've got one in. We can do three more. Let's do it. Or should we do all six? <laughs> they give you six holes. We might as well put six. We could drill in. extra ones. That's true. Yeah. We can use threaded rod to attach it through the slab. <laughs> all right. That's in. Wow. Oh, we left our rag in there. <laughs> Let's go get it. All right. They have these little hammer symbols on there. I wonder what that's for. Hmm. Use the hammer. Safety glasses. See these little teeth. Little, yeah, they, 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 so it won't fall in. There we go. Ah. Woo! Get our rag. All right. Dang. Now that is a live hole yep so ready. now we now we got to be careful ready for a toilet right yeah don't drop any tools dad all right let's clean up this mess and set that toilet what are you doing i knew you were going to film this <laughs> <laughs> the primer brush spattered on me all over my brand new paint Ugh. i don't have to put this in the video you can i'll own it all right gang i wanted to show you this this is something that I pay attention to. So on this toilet, see this area right here? This is where our flange goes. The flange you just saw us glue in, it fits in right here. And the wax ring seals between the top of the flange and the bottom of this casting. So I have, I have five eighths of an inch of room between here and here. So let's go inside and I'll show you why I'm checking. So I wanted to make sure that this was low enough. I, we would probably be okay, but it's, I always like to check. So I'm less than three eighths of an inch. So we're gonna be fine, but I've had it happen where the flange was too tall, too high, and the toilet bowl hit the flange before it hit the floor, and now you got a real problem. So we're all set. Uh, I've got 5 16 bolts here, which I prefer over the quarter. That way I can really crank them down and crack the, the bowl. No, I'm just kidding. And I'm just going to make sure we're the same. Yep. All right. All right. Let's go grab that thing and put it in. All right, gang. So we got the tank on. Dad's outside turning the water on right now. I wanted to show you what we've done real quick. The hose naturally wanted to be in that position. The valve right here was directly pointing up. What we did was we turned the water off, 
rotated the valve about 45, 50 degrees to the right. And now the hose has a lot less stress on it. It also hides it a little better because now the hose has this pattern of going behind the tub. So it's not all the way out here and trying to conform to the way the valve was. So we just turn it a little bit, secured the hose and it looks great. And when you come back here, you know, you really can't even see it. So Sweet, dude. Yeah. Glad that's done. So we will caulk around here, final step, and that'll be it for the toilet. Alrighty, gang, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. We were expecting this to be a complete full day project, but it gave us a break. Finally, we got a break on this toilet and it's done. So we're gonna get out of here early. Woo! You might have noticed the walls are already painted and I've got all the, the trim the baseboard casing in. This color is called uh, Chic Gray, and it's at 50%. Now, I never knew that. I didn't, I didn't know you could pick out a color and then ask them to go 25% lighter or 50% lighter. Hmm. And that's what this is, So it's, it's, and it's perfect. It's kind of cool. It looks great. Yep. Um, all that's left is put in the vessel sink, so that'll be in our next video. Those two beautiful blue, cobalt blue glass bowls. We're gonna give this a second coat, put on the handles that match, a little caulking, touch up paint, and that's it. Yeah, we're wrapping it up here. Pretty quick. It's gonna be, it's gonna look awesome. And the next video should be, it should be all simple stuff. Yep, and they love it already. They walk by and just look at it. <laughs> so if you like the video, be sure to like it below, smash that like button for us, drop us a comment. Really loving all the comments from everybody. Try to answer as many as we can, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. That would be awesome, and we'll see you on the next one. Yes, sir.